And welcome back, guys. I uh, appreciate you guys watching. This is Gatlin here from Metro Electronics, and uh, today we're going to be doing a live webinar on our AX SWC and our AX DIS CH13. Uh, behind, behind me here, I've set up a uh, live install for you guys so you guys can see how it all operates, how it's installed, and how to program it. Uh, today we're going to be talking about a few different items and uh, I'll give the baselines here. First I'd like to give a big shout out and thank you to Adam uh, Rogers, uh, big help for uh, this live stream today, getting everything set up so that way we can get uh, this set up the way that it is. Uh, he's a blessing, so thank you very much Adam, I really appreciate your time today. Uh, he helped me get this whole thing kind of collaborated and set up. So. Uh, I'd like to kind of go over the baseline here. Uh, I am going to be looking at some of the comments uh, kind of halfway through the original webinar here. Uh, that way uh, we don't get kind of clogged up with answering so many questions all at the same time. Uh, if you guys want to look in the comments there, some of our tech support team will probably be watching as well and uh, answering some of the questions as we go along here. Um, so it looks like we have a pretty good uh, concurrent viewers watching as we uh, speak now. So I'll go ahead and start off by introducing the new packaging for our AX SWC. And that's behind me here on the car. So here's the new packaging, guys. If you guys haven't seen it yet, uh, it's really, really, really nice. Uh, a lot nicer than our older packaging. Uh, it is 100% recyclable as well. So once you're done with that, you guys can throw that in the recycling bin. Um, we'll go ahead and do a quick unboxing of what is inside of this package. Uh, we're going to go ahead and talk about how to program, what you guys should do when you first take it out of the box. And that is, if you guys can answer that for me in the comments below, uh, what is the first thing you guys should do when you take the uh, ASWC, formerly known as the ASWC, out of the package? Um, you'll notice here there's a little port on the top here that you'll be able to remove that cover. And you should go on our access updater and the very first thing that you should do to these modules is update them. Uh, as newer vehicles become available and newer vehicles uh, become on the market, uh, we do updates very frequently and it's always a good idea, rule of thumb, is to go ahead and update this module. So the first thing you'll find out of the box is the module. The second thing that you'll find is a quick instruction pamphlet here which will actually refer you to our Access Interfaces website. Uh, you want to go ahead and click on the vehicle fit guide and the ASWC1 instructions. So that way you can get the instructions and the wiring coloring information from our website. Um, when you call tech support and you're asking for wiring colors, uh, they won't give it to you. So you need to go on to our Access Integrate website or Access Interfaces website, uh, update your module, and then also uh, check out the vehicle fit guide and uh, get your ASWC1 instructions. Third thing that you'll find inside the box here, and I'm just going to take this to the side here, is the two wiring harnesses. This here is the wiring harness that you'll hook up to your radio harness or interface, depending on what install you're doing. And this here is the 3.5mm uh, SWC jack. So depending on which radio you're doing, uh, you'll hook up either the brown or the brown white to your radio wiring harness and what that'll do is it'll allow you to integrate into your factory steering wheel controls using our module ASWC1. So I'll go ahead and unpackage this here. Again this is our, AS, our AX SWC uh, steering wheel control interface. When you take the packaging out, you'll, you'll notice that there's a, a large array of different colored wires. And depending on the application that you're planning on using, um, a lot of these wires may be discarded. So again, go on our Access Integrate website, or Access Interfaces website, and uh, update your module as well. Get your wiring coloring information for your vehicle. One quick little tip here that I wanted to show you. And I'm just going to, I'm looking at my phone here, guys, at the same time so I can keep track of what I'm talking about. So just bear with me here. All right, so when you're doing the connections on this harness, you want to make sure that you're doing some solid connections, some Western Union connections, soldering and heat shrinking, uh, depending on what uh, your install bay is doing. Some of you guys may use electrical tape. That's fine. 
but make sure that your connections are really nice and solid, guys. That's super important. Um, no butt connectors, no uh, you know T-taps or anything like that. And when you're hooking up the ground off of our harness, you wanna make sure that it's a reference ground, okay guys? Uh, this red wire here is for your switch power, which will turn on and off with your radio. Uh, this here is your 3.5 mil jack, which uh, communicates your steering wheel control data communication to our interface from your steering wheel. So uh, I'll show you a quick little tip here, a uh, quick little trick that you guys can use in the install bay. I'll quickly go ahead and grab my 3.5 AXDIS CH13. So what you'll notice here is that I've actually cut the 3.5 mil jack off of the uh, wiring harness for AXDIS CH13. And what this does, it actually allows you to uh, make the install just a little bit cleaner. So if you're using a JVC or a Kenwood radio, and I'll go ahead and grab quickly my uh, wiring strippers. You'll see here that once you strip back that wire, you'll see a white and a red with uh, a little bit of a trace here. This uh, extra aluminum wire here uh, allows you to actually, it allows the wire to have some tensile strength. So just disregard that. And if you're using a JVC or Kenwood radio, and in order to uh, make the install just a little bit cleaner, you can actually just take the red wire, strip that back, and use that on the blue and yellow wire on your JVC or Kenwood radio. I'll show you guys that once we get into the car here. Uh, I'll go over some programming uh, points. That way you guys can see how it's programmed live. Uh, let's see here. All the tech documents and programming and changing of radio types is all found again on our vehicle fit guide and our ASWC wiring instructions on our website. Um, the updater is super important. You can go on the Access Integrate or Access Interfaces website and download the Access updater and update your module from there. Part of what you want to do before you install your ASWC is you'd like to go ahead and actually test all of the controls in the vehicle on the steering wheel. And the reason why you want to do that is so you can confirm functionality first off before you go ahead and install an aftermarket radio. Go through all the functions, test everything, make sure everything's working the way that it should prior to installing anything into somebody's vehicle. Uh, that way you're not kind of either wasting your time or uh, you can confirm that yes, the steering wheel control buttons are volume up and down on the left hand side and track left and right are on the right hand side or vice versa. It's important to just test the vehicle uh, prior to the installation guys, okay? Um, we will talk about shortly here as well um, how to program uh, the offshore branded radios. Metro doesn't really cater to the offshore unbranded radios. Uh, typically we cater to brand name radios like Pioneer, Kenwood, Alpine, Clarion and so forth. Brand name, recognizable brand name radios, Sony, so on. Uh, and the reason for that is just so that uh, our protocols can be consistent with what you guys are installing in the bay. So that's super important to remember as well. Alrighty guys. Something else to keep in mind as well, uh, always read the instructions. I know that uh, you know sometimes it's a little bit hard and you wanna just get it in there and you know turn it on and have it work, but it's very imperative that you read the instructions because every vehicle programming procedures can be different. Um, we've patented that auto detect feature on our ASWC, which should make your life a lot easier in the install bay. However, it's imperative that you read the instructions. So if there is a, a programming that you need to do, or you'd like to remap some of your steering wheel control buttons on your vehicle, that you look at the access uh, interfaces, um, the access interfaces uh, website and make sure that you guys have the instructions down pat before you start the installation, okay guys? How's the home life? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm sure you guys have probably noticed here. Uh, I've got quite the uh, haircut going on here. Uh, I've been told it looks pretty mature. I've also got my lucky Tim Hortons coffee. So I'll have a sip of that before we get into the car here, guys. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and actually bring you guys into the vehicle. Uh, I've installed behind me here a AX. 
DIS CH13, which is our data vehicle interface, which is compatible with a variety of Chrysler products. Uh, again, if you'd like to know which interface you need to use for your vehicle, go ahead and check our vehicle fit guide on our Axis Integrate uh, website, okay guys? Um, we'll leave that link down below in the uh, description for you as well. Uh, and quickly before I get into this, I want to make sure that you guys go ahead and hit that thumbs up button as well as subscribe. Uh, subscribing and hitting that red bell notification button will let you guys know in the future when we do uh, these videos, these live webinars, which we're planning on doing a whole lot more, guys. So uh, if you, in the comments, can leave a comment about what type of products you'd like to see in the next live webinar, uh, please go ahead and hit that and put that inside of the uh, description box for me, if you could, please. So this is, again, our AXDIS CH13 fits Chrysler 2004 to 17. We have a variety of these harnesses as well, guys, but the key thing here is that it has a built-in steering wheel control interface. So what I wanted to show you in the vehicle that's behind me, and I want to give a big shout out to my friend, uh, SRT Magnum on Instagram, if you guys want to check that out. He uh, actually let me use this vehicle for this install. So in the vehicle, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how to program the module. And uh, there's a couple of key things here. Uh, the first thing is that once you have everything wired up and you followed the instructions to a T verbatim, uh, you want to go ahead and make sure that you read thoroughly the programming procedure. Based on the vehicle, depending on the year, make, and model, it could be a little bit different. Uh, sometimes it'll auto-detect, sometimes you need to reprogram buttons, and when you tested the vehicle before you installed it, you'll know what side the track up and down volume, up and down buttons will be on the steering wheel, so you'll know the right configuration if, in fact, you do need to actually reprogram the uh, steering wheel control interface to this. So, uh, in the vehicle behind me, I've got uh, this radio interface installed and uh, just a, a basic Kenwood radio. Uh, as well, we've used our, just gonna put this down there. In this Chrysler vehicle, this is a 2009 uh, Dodge Magnum SRT8, and uh, we used our uh, Metra 996519B dash kit. And uh, you guys will see the fit and finish. It's beautiful inside there. So let me take you guys inside the car and show you the install. Oh, wait, before I do that, let me show you which radio we installed. So this is the uh, 2020 version of the Kenwood radio. It's a Kenwood KMM X503 Bluetooth USB iPod. It's a mechless head unit. Uh, by mechless, I mean it's a mechanical list unit, so there is no CD player. Um, we won't talk too much about the radio, but I just want to show you guys which radio um, we did in fact install. Something to keep in mind, a little bit important here, is that uh, the newer JVC and Kenwood radios actually have a little bit of a different protocol when it comes to the steering wheel control interface. And you'll find that sometimes using the newer Kenwood radios, it may not auto detect or it may not actually program properly because they've changed their protocol on their steering wheel control outputs from the, or inputs from the radio. Um, so you may need to reconfigure the ASWC to uh, JVC on a Kenwood radio. Just a little tech tip there for you. All right, let's get inside the car here. I'll go ahead and uh, get a light set up as well. Let some of the comments happen as well. All right, guys, let me uh, take you inside of this car. I've already done all the hard work. I've pre-wired everything. I've heat shrunk and soldered all the connections as well. So uh, that's really important. So when you guys are doing an ASWC install or any install for that matter behind the dash, just make sure that you heat shrink, solder, do your due diligence and really take care when you're doing the wiring. If you're not using solder or heat shrink or tape, whatever the case might be, and you're using T-taps or butt connectors, that can create uh, different resistance loads and problems with programming. So uh, really take care when you're doing the install, guys, okay? Seeing a lot of comments here, guys. I really appreciate that. Make sure that you guys uh, leave a lot more comments. I will be checking them very shortly here. 
We'll go through the installation process on this car and then uh, I'll answer some of the questions there inside of the, the comment box. All right, so we're taking you inside the car here. Let me make sure that we can actually see what's going on. Hopefully we got a good view here. Uh, the way that we're doing this, there is a little bit of a lag inside of the computer here. So I'm actually watching as uh, I do this here, just to make sure that we do in fact have the, uh, the proper view inside the car. I've got the uh, AX DIS CH13 in my hand here. And uh, I've also got the programming instructions here as well. So um, the first thing that we're gonna wanna do and it says here for the steps of the LED located inside the interface can be seen while it's active. The interface does not need to be opened to see the LED. Uh, the LED is actually right there guys so no need to uh, take apart the box or anything like that. The update part of this interface is on the top. You can just take a flathead screwdriver and pop that off. And I'll go ahead and do that here quickly for you guys so you can see the uh, mini HDMI, I think it's a micro USB uh, port there, so you can go on the Access Interfaces website and uh, do the update. I already updated this module to make this live stream a little easier for you guys, that way you guys can see the process of the installation as well as the programming. I'll go ahead and put that back in there now. Carrying on with the instructions and programming, we've already followed the previous steps here. Here's our application guide for this particular module. Again, 2004 to 2017, depending on what vehicle you're making model that you have there. But again, uh, if you guys want to find the uh, vehicle you're making model for your car and which module will work for you, you can go ahead and on our Access Integrate website and uh, use our vehicle fit guide and it'll tell you all that information. So this vehicle is a 2009 Dodge Magnum. And it is the factory amplified system, however, it is not the Boston acoustic sound system. Uh, in order to find out which one of these things are amplified, typically in Dodges uh, of this era, anywhere from 2004 to 2010, the factory amplifier is actually going to be found over here behind the light switch. Uh, you can pop off a couple of screws here below this panel right here, and uh, you'll actually find an aluminum cased amplifier on this side. It's pretty difficult to find out whether one of these things is amplified or not otherwise. So you actually have to look behind the dash uh, when you're doing vehicle fit uh, confirmation at your store or when you're going ahead and buying one of our modules online or from a retailer in your location. So uh, again, just pop off this panel right here and uh, you'll find the amplifier right behind the dash here. Okay, guys? So I followed the instructions. Uh, this page here, page number three, is actually for a vehicle without a factory amplifier. And the connections on page number four are for vehicles with amplifiers. We've done our due diligence in the instruction manuals here, guys. We put a lot of attentions. Um, again, if you guys are not 100% sure which module to use, uh, there's an attention here at the top. This interface will work with models that are either non-amplified, analog amplified, or digitally amplified. Please follow the instructions carefully for your model vehicle. Failure or failure to do so may either result in no sound, low sound, uh, and if you're unsure of your vehicle's factory amplifier, please contact your local dealership. Uh, you can either contact your local dealership or you can go ahead and look behind the dash on something like this, uh, or if you, uh, you know, are unsure if your vehicle is amplified, do some Google researching, contact your retailer, and they'll let you know which module uh, you'll have to buy. Okay, guys? So I've already followed all the instructions here, uh, our connections for our steering wheel control interface as well. And now we're on to the vehicle programming. The first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to start up the vehicle. We're going to want to connect the AXDIS CH13 harness to the vehicle's wiring harness in the vehicle. The LED will initially turn solid green. Turn off for a few seconds while auto detects the radio while auto detects the radio installed. LED will then flash red up to 18 times indicating which radio is connected to the interface and then turn off for a couple of seconds. 
pay close attention to how many red flashes there are. This will help in troubleshooting if need be. Refer to the LED feed pack section for more information. After a couple of seconds, the LED will turn on solid red while the interface auto detects the vehicle. The radio will shut off at this point. This process should take about 5 to 30 seconds. That one little paragraph is actually very important, guys, and the reason for that is because you actually have to let the module do what it needs to do before you shut off the vehicle. You'll notice that the radio will turn on, turn off a bunch of times, and uh, it, sometimes it does that. You just have to be patient. Don't turn off the ignition. Don't call tech support yet. Just uh, read the instructions very thoroughly here, and you guys will be able to get your steering wheel controls working no problem. Okay? Once the vehicle has auto-detected the interface, the LED will turn on solid green, and the radio will come back on, indicating programming was successful. I've already tested all this. I've actually reset the module here as well. Um, to reset these, uh, we've done an update on the module, which is super great. Uh, thank you, Juan and uh, Jason Anderson and our R&D department for uh, creating such uh, an incredible interface and uh, ease of use for all of our installers, Guy. The reset button is right there. Hopefully you guys can see that right there. Blue button between the two wiring harnesses here. Um, so I've already tested it and uh, confirmed functionality, but I am going to go over it with you guys as well. Uh, test all the functions of the installation for proper operation. Uh, before reassembling the dash, if the interface fails to function, refer to resetting the AXDIS CH13. Um, note, the LED will turn on solid green for a moment and then turn off under normal operation after the key has been cycled. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, now that I've read the instructions very thoroughly, I'm going to go ahead and grab the key. You guys are going to hear some of the uh, dinging and binging going on here. And we're going to start the vehicle. There we go. All right, so I've started the vehicle. I've let all the uh, warning lights and such turn off on the dash. And uh, I'm now going to go ahead and connect our module. And I'll show you the LED flashing. So far, you're going to go ahead and see the green. What I'm actually going to do is I'm actually going to reset this again. And the reason why I'm going to do that is just so that uh, you guys can see the installation. So there's our green LED. Hopefully you guys can see that there. It's going to turn off. And then it's going to flash red. We're going to count those red flashes, okay guys? You'll notice as well, I'll take my arm out of the way here. It's going to go solid red. And again, this could take up to 5 to 30 seconds, so just be patient, guys. Don't turn off that key yet, okay? And there we go. We have our green LED. The radio will then turn back on. And this confirms that our installation was successful, guys. It's really important that we go ahead and read the instructions and be patient when we're installing this. Um, our tech support guys are some of the best in the absolute industry here, guys. And they are bombarded by phone calls from people who refuse to read the instructions. I can't reiterate that enough to you guys. You have to read the instructions. Hopefully you guys can see my face here. Please, read the instructions. All right? So our radio now has turned back on, and we're going to go ahead and test functionality. So uh, we're going to turn the radio on here. It's already on. Got sound? We got sound? Okay. And now we're going to go ahead and test for our steering wheel controls. And our volume up and down is functioning as it should. And our track up and down is also functioning as it should. In cases where the vehicle radio will turn on and you don't have any functionality, 
refer to the troubleshooting guide again on our Access Integrate website and you guys will be able to find very helpful information on there in regards to remapping or reprogramming your steering wheel control interface. So let's uh, go ahead and uh, I'll take you guys back to the desk here. Uh, I can see here that some of uh, your questions are being answered by our Metro Tech support guys as we're doing this live stream. So that's great. Big shout out to you guys. Thank you so much for helping me with that. And let's go ahead and answer some of your questions. So I'll start up at the top here. Uh, there's a guy who's so excited. He, oh, uh, okay. Uh, Adam Rogers. Adam Rogers, hey, thank you so much again for helping me with this live stream. Very uh, helpful you've been through this whole process and trying to figure out uh, all of our camera situations. Going forward, we'll actually have some uh, better angles, some better shots for you. Um, I tried my best here using my MacBook and the uh, web camera that's built in. But, uh, you know, Metro does actually have a new Hero 8 that allows us to do live streaming. Um, and we had it all figured out, but there were some issues with the microphone. So, um, unfortunately, we're not using that today. But going forward, uh, once, uh, I think I have to return the camera because it was defective because there is some uh, background noise. Once we get that all figured out, we'll go ahead on the next one and use that. It's got a really good image and uh, a really good microphone, hopefully. So, thank you again, Rod, uh, Adam. Really appreciate that. All right, uh, let's see here. Got Jonathan Brothers. Jonathan Brothers is our other sales rep. Thank you so much, Jonathan, for tuning in. Will Access be introducing uh, ACC generation via CAN bus for the steering wheel control interfaces? Um, almost all Farca connectors on new vehicles have no accessory power. Oh, it looks like uh, Aaron, our Metro Tech, has actually answered that question for you guys. So it's, um, I don't see that uh, being a feature on the Axis SWC, since we typically use the AXDIC DIS for turn on. That's right. Okay. Let's go on to the next one here. Uh, Charlie McConkie, hopefully I'm pronouncing that correct. Uh, he says, there are other modules for those applications, okay? That could be. Um, again, Aaron, he's on, he's on ball here. We have interfaces for those, but I will pass the request along. Uh, or one that has made, okay, let's go on down here. What else we got? Uh, so we got uh, Jeremy Langley. Metra should add an extra ground wire in ASWC harness for convenience when the, gr when the car needs a reference ground. Um, I'm sure there's a reason why we don't, and uh, it's usually, uh, we, we rely on our installers, guys. Um, if you guys are familiar with a, um, with a Fluke uh, multimeter, go ahead and use that and uh, switch it over to ohms and just check your reference ground. Make sure that you're getting a nice solid ground. Uh, it's really imperative on the installation for the ASWC, so uh, you guys can make sure that you get the proper install by making sure that you have a proper reference ground. It's super important. So uh, I'm going to assume that there's a pretty good reason why we don't have one on there for you to use separately. Um, but uh, I'll pass it along and maybe we, we can add that in at some point. Uh, just listen to the front door speakers up front. Uh, just listen to the door speakers up front. Full range on non-amplified and only low bass on amplified. Um, so it looks like uh, we got a LVN LWD. Uh, he says, listen to the door speakers up front. Full range on non-amplified and only low bass on amplified. Uh, so he's giving you guys a little bit of a tip here. That is true. So on amplified vehicles, you'll find in the doors that they are just a mid-bass speaker. You're not going to get any highs or a lot of voice out of them. Uh, and then I guess uh, if it's just bass only in the doors, it'll be an amplified vehicle. And if it's full range out of the doors, specifically on this Chrysler, uh, it'll be, um, it'll be non-amplified, guys. Uh, da, 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 da. So the ASWC has a black wire that you can splice for reference ground to. That is true. We don't add like an extra wire, but there is a, a ground reference there. Um, in some cases, uh, the factory grounds just simply are not good enough. So you may have to add an additional ground to the chassis to make sure that you get the uh, proper programming done on your ASWC. Uh, da, 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 da. What else we got here? 
All right. Mohammed, uh, thank you, Aaron, for answering that question there. That's right. Yes, Jonathan Brothers, if you're in uh, Texas, Oklahoma, or Arkansas, or uh, have any questions, uh, please contact him in that location at John B at metra-autosound.com. I'm Gatlin from uh, Metra Canada, and uh, I can be reached at Gatlin S at metra-autosound.com. Uh, and if you have any further contact or questions in regards to tech support, you can reach us on our Metra online.com and click on that contact us part of the uh, website and you'll get all the contact information you guys need there. So uh, I don't see any further questions here. I hope that I've answered everything you guys are looking to have answered. Um, if there's anything else that you guys want to know about before we end this live stream, uh, we're going to keep it a little bit shorter this time just so that it's not so long and uh, that way you guys can keep, uh, keep concentrated on it. We want to keep these things uh, going for you guys. So if there's any more uh, applications or our products that you'd like to have us do another live webinar on, uh, I have a few in mind myself. So again, make sure you hit that post, uh, that subscribe button and that bell notification button below and uh, you'll get notified uh, on our next live stream. Uh, Morgan, our uh, website uh, designer, also posts these uh, live webinars all over our Facebook pages and um, our Instagrams and our, uh, all of our social media platforms, guys. So um, if, I'm just going to check down here, make sure there's any more questions. And uh, we'll wait a couple more seconds here. Hopefully you guys are keeping safe. You guys are uh, ready for everything to open back up. And uh, we're going to be able to get everything rolling really, really soon, guys. Hopefully I can get a haircut. Um, you know, this mature haircut is uh, a little bit overrated. I, I really would like to get my fade back if I could. So, uh, Trudy, thank you so much. Again, Trudy Moore, uh, she has been such uh, an amazing help for me uh, here uh, in Canada and worldwide. She's uh, just amazing. Thank you very much. Uh, Jake Bates as well. Thank you for uh, collaborating all of these live streams for us. Appreciate it. And uh, if I've left you out of the thank you note, just uh, know that I appreciate you guys and all of our retailers and installers. Uh, GSB 12 volt, thanks for your time today, Gatlin and Metro Techs on the video. Very informative today. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I appreciate it so much. And uh, if there's anything I could do for you guys, please contact me or uh, Metra. You can reach us at metraonline.com. Hit that bell notification button, hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks so much, guys, and take care.